it was a very big mistake. I wish I could go back in time and just slap myself in the face and say, don't be an idiot. Hey everybody, what's good? Today I'm gonna answer the question, what is a raw file? And we're gonna do it in the simplest way possible. For those of you who have never shot raw before on your cameras and you have the ability to, I personally think that that's the best way to go and we're gonna talk about why here. So what is a raw file actually in comparison to a JPEG that you would normally shoot? Now a raw file is all of the raw data that the camera could possibly take all in one file. That's, that's all it means. One of the most useful things that it helps you with is your white balance. So let's say your white balance is a little bit off and you take a shot and you think it's either too warm or too cool, then you can bring it onto the computer later and you can manipulate that temperature control without losing quality in the photo itself. There's a lot more that goes on with a RAW file, but what you need to know is that in post-processing on the computer, you're gonna have a lot more data to play with to make your image look that much better. To help people understand raw files, I like to use this analogy of a cake. When you're baking a cake, you have all these ingredients. You have the flour, you have the sugar, you have eggs, you have, you have all kinds of stuff, and you sometimes have ingredients that you put in to make the cake taste a certain way before you bake it. Now, a raw file is like those raw ingredients. It's like those ingredients before you bake the cake. A JPEG file is like what the cake is after you take it out of the oven and it's already baked. You can put all kinds of toppings and some icing onto a cake that's already baked and make it taste a little better or taste a different flavor, but you can't change the amount of sugar that you put in there. You can't change the moistness of the cake uh, by just adding toppings. Can you do, I don't, I don't think you can do that. I'm not a baker. Now imagine having all of the raw ingredients in front of you and thinking, oh, I wanna add something into the batter before I bake it. You can do that because you have all of the ingredients separated still, and that's what a raw file is. Now the reason that some people might choose not to shoot in raw is because it takes up a lot of memory and it takes up memory and storage. So if you take a lot of pictures and then you wanna keep them for a very long time, you're gonna have to have some large hard drives. Let's say you're on a trip for a weekend or a vacation. You're gonna have to have some larger memory cards unless you're dumping those photos onto your computer as you go. Now I have a confession to make. Um, even as I was doing photography way back in the day as a side hustle uh, for some extra cash, I knew that I could start shooting in RAW, but um, I decided not to. And the reasons I decided not to were because I was confident in my ability to just get the right picture um, in the moment, you know, set the correct exposure, set the correct white balance and get the shot. And also because as a kid, I didn't wanna spend the money on memory to be able to, to shoot the amount of RAW files that I could um, with JPEG. And that, honestly was a huge mistake. It was a very big mistake. I wish I could go back in time and just slap myself in the face and say, don't be an idiot. I'm sure a lot of us, we wish we could go back in time and do that for any particular reason. So anyway, I was back, that was back when I was, you know, a kid when I was in college and uh, I didn't really have a ton of money. I still don't have a ton of money, but I mean, now memory's cheaper, so it doesn't matter that much. So what I wanna do is I wanna give you some examples of what it looks like to edit a RAW file versus a JPEG file. I'm gonna take the same picture, both in JPEG and in RAW, and then I'm going to edit them and show you the differences in what you can edit in the shadows and in the color. Okay guys, I'm purposefully taking this photo with the incorrect white balance. This is what the white balance should probably be. Um, and the exposure should probably be something like that. That would, to me would be good. It has nice shadows, has a little bit of brightness. But I'm going to over, I'm going to underexpose purposefully. Um, so I'm going to go a little darker just to show you the power of the raw file. And I'm also going to do the wrong white balance, which would be a little warmer. I'm going to go on the warmer side. I'm going to focus in on this guy right here, and. Of course, a raw file is not going to fix your focus, so that's something that you definitely want to get right off the bat. That's why these newer mirrorless cameras are, um, are a huge benefit, honestly, uh, because uh, you have a lot more power with your autofocus. All right, I already imported the files into Lightroom. One is the raw file, two is the JPEG. 
but I, I just want to show you the differences real quick. So let's start with the raw file. First, let's just correct this so that the white balance is correct. Uh, that looks pretty good to me, so I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to bring up the exposure. I think that looks good. So I wanted to keep some shadows here, you know, not blow it out too much. I'm going to show you this right here. So take a look at the this deep black right here, the shadows. Keep an eye on those areas. And then we're also going to take a look at this uh, brighter area here. I'm just going to copy these settings and I'm going to bring them into my other photo, the JPEG, just so that they're exactly the same parameters. So right off the bat, you can see between the two. I'm just going back and forth between the two. A lot more of the colors were preserved in the raw file. If you go to the JPEG um, here, because of the white balance editing and because it's already burned into the image, you see this magenta haze around it. Now that might not be the worst thing in the world. It might look good to some people, but the fact that it has to be that way is the point of the whole thing. What I'm going to do is I just want to bring the shadows all the way up just to show you what happens. Okay, so I'm take, going into the shadows right here and I'm bringing them all the way up. And then we're going to do that also with the raw file. I'm going to go into the shadows right here and bring them all the way up. All right. Now, so inside the shadows right here, I'm going to just switch back and forth between the raw. This is the raw. This is the JPEG. So again, raw, JPEG. You see this? You see this? like purpley glow that's some of the stuff you're gonna you're gonna run into when you try to manipulate too much with a JPEG next I'm gonna just show you the range for the white balance and what you can do with a raw file so this is the raw file right here I'm just gonna go like all the way up the the highest Kelvin it goes and then let's go to this guy and see what happens when I do it this you can tell the difference just take a look at this area when I switch back and forth. You can see the details get preserved as you change the, the white balance in the raw file. The JPEG, the details got started to get fuzzy and blown out. Now I do use Adobe Lightroom and for some of you that might not be an option or you might not want to invest in an application like that. But I'll tell you this, uh, if you just do a Google search real quick on free raw editing software you can find something to edit your raw files with it's not difficult and you can do it just go ahead and try also editing those raw files actually helps you understand what you're doing next time you're out taking pictures so is there really a time to not shoot raw the answer in my opinion is no unless you just don't have enough memory or you really don't have a, a way to edit the file that's the only time I would say don't shoot raw files. My personal advice to you as a beginner or intermediate photographer is to invest money in larger memory cards, invest money into solid state hard drives that you can keep those files on. Remember how I said I was confident in my ability to take the shot and get the, get the correct exposure? Well, I actually now believe I was overconfident. The one thing that got me every time was when my white balance was a little bit off because when you have a JPEG and you try to edit the white balance, you try to edit the color, because that cake is already baked, it messes around with the integrity of the actual file. It manipulates stuff in a way that looks a little bad sometimes. And that's because you're trying to cover up the flavor of a cake that's already baked by putting some toppings on it. So I hope that answered some questions for you uh, on the basics of raw files versus JPEG files. Um, if you do have any more questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. I will answer them. All right, that's it for today. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, leave a comment below, uh, hit the like button. I'm gonna be doing way more of these short explanation videos. So if you leave a question down below, then I'll know what to talk about. If you don't have a question, then leave a fist emoji in the comments as a virtual pound it. For now, I'll see you in the next one and go out there and make something good. Unless you wanna be on camera. Baby, you see my setup? Look at this. Baby, hey, listen. It's time to record. <laughs> it's time to record. So, no more crying. What are you looking at? You looking at your best friend, the fan? <laughs> Go stand over there by the camera. Hi.
Remember those dancing baby videos from like the early 2000s or was that in the 90s? You know, you never seen that? It was like from when I was a little kid. They were like the first viral gif. You should learn to dance like that.